Hello and good day. My name is JC Gutinga. You are watching Rappler Talk. So let's talk about the visiting forces agreement between the Philippines and the United States. We Filipinos have never quite made up our minds about it, whether it's a fair deal to us Filipinos or whether it is lopsided, as its critics say. But right now, what we're facing is we might lose it. We're about to lose it, this deal with the United States. And we have many questions that I'm sure you want to ask about it. And we are privileged today to have uh, one voice, uh, authoritative voice on this subject, uh, former Armed Forces of the Philippines Lieutenant General Edilberto Adan. He was um, the executive director of the government's VFA commission from 2007 to 2014. Sir, welcome to Rappler. Thank you. Salamat po sa pagpunta niyo, sir. Okay, sir, simulan natin kasi when, when, when people say VFA, one of the more <clears throat> colorful episodes that we remember is the cases of those two U.S. Marines na nasangkot sa kaso here in the Philippines, si uh, Joseph Scott Pemberton and further back si Daniel Smith. Mm -hmm. So to service the memory of our audience, si Daniel Smith was accused of rape, eventually acquitted, si Joseph Scott Pemberton of homicide, and he's still appealing his case. So sir, what did we learn about the VFA in practice, not on paper, but in practice, dun sa dalawang kaso na to, sir? Can, can I go back first, no? Yes, sir. To... Uh the visiting forces, and it's the mother document, which is the Mutual Defense Treaty. Because you cannot talk about the VFA without talking about the Mutual Defense Treaty of 1951, which binds the United States and the Philippines to assist each other to uh, collectively or individually prepare each other for defense. And any armed attack on any of its public vessels, aircraft, or or base facilities will be considered an attack on the other party. Now, because of these obligations, the, the two governments have to conduct exercises, military exercises, and training activities. So this is what brings the United States troops to the Philippines, uh, particularly during the Balikatan exercise, which, it, which would involve a few thousand uh, U.S. troops, U.S. Marines. Pemberton was convicted by our courts, no? Yes, homicide. And until now, he is confined. Yes. Inside Camp Aguinaldo. Right. This goes to show that the due process was given, the judicial proceedings uh, were applied, and as, as, uh, they were, since they were convicted, since Pemberton was convicted, he is now uh, confined in our facility, yes. the Camp Aguinaldo. In other words, the U.S. complied with its obligations in accordance with the Visiting Forces Agreement. What, what would you say to dun sa mga <clears throat> critics who protested that dapat nasa bilibid siya. He shouldn't be in a separate compound. He's still being given... Um, special treatment compared to the average convicted criminal here in the Philippines. What would you say to that criticism? Okay. The U.S. is simply following what is in the agreement, the VFA. And this was negotiated for several years, I, I would say at least two years, no? until it's, um, uh, until the Senate, the Philippine Senate concurred to its ratification. So it was a negotiated uh, agreement. And uh, there is in that agreement the concept of uh, concurrent jurisdiction, no? Yes. But there's also a provision there that if a U.S. personnel, a military personnel, is um, to be confined or detained, no? It will be held in a facility jointly agreed right. by the two governments. Yes. So that's what the U.S. was... Uh, was uh, expecting, no? Right. So, musunod lang sila what oh. stipulated in the agreement a, itself. A jointly agreed facility. Right. Now, why so? Ang tanong. Bakit hindi bilibid? Right. Now, uh, the U.S. troops are here in the Philippines for an exercise. They are under orders to come here. They are not here as volunteers. They were ordered by their government to be here as military personnel to conduct training. Now, since uh, mistakes are, can happen, uh, some violations like 
what happened to Smith and Pemberton happened. So the two governments agreed. Anong gagawin? What what kind of uh, 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 how how will the custody be done? No, okay. fine. Now, what I learned when I was visiting forces uh, executive director, <coughs> the U.S. simply expects that the jail facilities of the Philippines comply with the minimum international standard. Unfortunately, our jails do not comply with those standards. Even our own Filipino prisoners, they know that this is not the international standard. So everyone knows that. So, ganun lang yon. So, what I'm saying is, yung visiting forces agreement is a negotiated one, depending on what you put on the table. Eh. Mm. Oh, oh. So, that was what happened. And it was ratified by the Senate. Yeah. Sige, sir, I'll post to you the question that's on most people's minds. Na ngayon na uh, we are facing its abrogation. We are in the 180-day interim. It's, yes, yes. It might disappear by August. Yeah. Uh, it was unfair to Filipinos in the first place that uh, it was a lopsided agreement. That if it was negotiated in the negotiation negotiating table, it was clear who the greater power was and who was the lesser power. Ganyan yung, that's the... I would say, running agreement, running narrative of the VFA for most Filipinos. So, sir, you are you were there uh, during its heyday and you helped form its practice. Um, how would you answer yung ganun? Na, was it unfair? Was it not unfair? Was there anything in the deal that could have been better negotiated for Filipinos? Para sa akin, the Americans, during the seven years I was there, observed faithfully what was agreed upon. They were, in the first place, nakalagay sa agreement na they are bound to comply with all Philippine laws and uh, respect our customs. Nandun yun eh. Now, before an American ship uh, arrives, no, the men are already given lectures, orientation about the Philippine culture, Philippine laws by their commanders. In fact, I even had the chance several times no, to talk to the troops before they went ashore and um, reminded them no, to behave and everything will be all right. They're welcome to the country, but they must lo follow our laws. So that was my uh, observation. No? Uh, I wouldn't say it's lopsided because that is what we agreed on. Okay. Uh, for the reasons I cited, it is what you bring to the table no? that will uh, lead to mm -hmm. your, your agreement. Yun nga, yung jail situation natin eh. Right. Hindi naman pala compliance sa basic international standard. O pagkatapos gusto mong ilagay doon yung, yung uh, foreign uh, visitor no? who committed something. And that foreign troop, that U.S. Marine for example, it's not here of his own volition. He was ordered by his government right. to come here. Right, right. Diba? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to today. What run through your mind nung narinig nyo na pinapa-abrogate ni President Duterte itong <coughs> VFA? Yeah. Gaya ng nasabi ko, we cannot talk about the Visiting Forces Agreement without the MDT, uh, referring to the Middle Defense Treaty. Yes. Kasi implementation ito eh. Right. No? Um, ang paliwanag ko dyan is uh, an analogy, no? Two neighbors, one is, uh, one is uh, more affluent, bigger, with a small neighbor, katabi. Uh, pag nasunog yung isang bahay, in danger yung isa. Both of them, if the, that one of the houses gets burned, in danger yung kabila. So they agree. Sabi nung isa, oh, ikaw, malaking bahay mo, meron ka na dyang firefighting system, tulungan mo ako dito na lagyan din ito kasi may in danger ka rin eh. Common threat. No? Mm. Common interest. Yes. And so they agree. Sige, I will help you uh, put up a, a fire uh, prevention system, a firefighting system. Yun, agreement na yun, yun ang mutual defense treaty that we will help each other fight fire and prevent fire okay. by training together. Pero bago ko pumasok sa bahay mo para tulungan kita, dahil magtatrabaho ko dyan to install equipment and all that, kailangan maliwanag yung rules. Pwede ba ako magsigarilyo sa loob ng bahay mo? Pwede right. ako bang uminom dyan? 
Ilan sa amin ang pwedeng pumasok? Kakatok ba ako? Ilan sana ako tutulog? Magdodorbel ba ako? Kano ko kain? Ganon. <laughs> Yun ang visiting forces agreement. Right. Yung mga conditions, no? Na pag nandito sila sa loob, anong pwede nilang gawin? Right. Oo. So pag inalis mo yung conditions na yon, although may agreement kayo na we will help each other, paano ko magagawa yung trabaho ko kung hindi maliwanag ano yung conditions? Eh kung, kung magsigarilyo ako sa loob, papayagan mo ba ako? O, kung ligawan ko yung anak mo, papayagan mo ba ako? You know, right. These are the things. Uh, na, to, to, uh, to, to service uh, the memory of our, oh. our, our audiences, no? yung isa ilan kasi sa mga crucial hmm. elements of the VFA is uh, visa-free and yeah, passport-free yeah. entry oh, yeah. of U.S. troops. And they are both loads, di ba? Is, minsan isang buong aircraft carrier yan, that, That's why. Yun nga ang kaibahan, no? So you need to have like, those. Oo, oh, oh, because when U.S. troops arrive, uh, for example, an aircraft carrier, no? Or, or a U.S. Marine Brigade. They could be 2,000 people on mm -hmm. the ground, no? Plus their um, Air Force right. personnel servicing the U.S. aircraft that that uh, land in Clark, no? Uh, and this is done in different parts of the country, not in Subic nor Clark uh, only. Yes. They could land in in Zamboanga, they could land in Palawan, mm -hmm. uh, go ashore uh, yeah. in some remote uh, shore of Mindoro. Yes. Eh, yung ba eh, meron ka bang immigration dun na uh, magtatatak ng passport? At eh, ano, hindi practical, di ba? Mm -hmm. Now, gaya ng nasabi ko, itong practice ng ganitong visiting forces, ang tawag sa international uh, um, uh, relations is status of forces agreement, SOFA. No? Mm -hmm. eh, yung tayo lang ang nag, nag, nagbansag ng tinawag natin to emphasize that they're visitors, tinawag natin na VFA, pero SOFA right. ito. SOFA. Now, the U.S. has more than 100 SOFAs with different nations. No? Merong SOFA na maigsi, two pages lang. Pilipinas, about 13, 15 pages. Sa ibang bansa, over 100 pages. Mm -hmm. So, bakit ganun? Yeah, what does it indicate? Oh. Kung mahaba or maigsi ang isang oh. Kasi, uh, yun na nga, SOFA. hindi pare-pareho ang conditions ng agreement ng Defense Treaty. For example, in Japan, the U.S. troops are based there. The U.S. 13th Air Force is based in Japan. The headquarters there. Parang Clark. Yes. And the same with the U.S. Naval Forces. No? Also, they have a big base in Yokohama, Japan. Nandun sila permanently. Sa Pilipinas, hindi naman ganun eh. Hindi ba ano lang sila Rotational pinapilas natin. Rotational presence lang. Yes. So, iba-iba ang <coughs> sinasaad ng agreement. Kaya nagkakaiba. Okay. Um, what did we get out of it? Kasi yun pa isang malaking tanong. I remember you were at a forum and uh, people were asking, ang Philippines ba nag-benefit? There are people who are under the impression that uh, it was an, an agreement to receive hand-me-down equipment from the U.S. or allowing the U.S. to do whatever they want uh, within Philippine territory. <coughs> but from your observation, what was it in factual terms that the Philippines derived because there is a VFA? Okay. Again, it is not the VFA. It's the Mutual Defense Treaty right. and uh, two more agreements, the Military Assistance Program mm -hmm. and the EDCA, no? yes. Enhanced Defense Cooperation And you're saying we should agreement. see it all in, as one whole? Yes. It is not the VFA, uh, which is about the personnel. Personnel arriving in the Philippines. Arriving in the Philippines, the privileges, the immunities. Iba naman yung Military Assistance Program. Right. Now, uh, before the Philippines closed the bases, the U.S. bases, in 1992, the Philippines was getting something like 200 to 250 million dollars worth of support a year before 1992. When we closed the bases, it dwindled hmm. to less than a million. No? Okay. So, nawala yung operational support. And uh, within five years' time, we, we many of our equipment Helicopters, aircraft, ships were in, in a bad state no, mm -hmm. of, of repair. Uh, they were not in full operational condition because of lack of spares, mm -hmm. spare parts, because walang assistance. And right. we have to buy. Yes. Ang problema, we were not able to provide 
uh, the country was not able to provide the budget to fill up for that requirement because right. we have to buy this time, no? Mm -hmm. um, so when when the VFA was um, was uh, approved and came into effect in 1999, again, no, uh, this this uh, agreement, the the military assistance agreement, was again uh, opened and became more. Uh, in other words, uh, it was again uh, made effective. No? And then came the war on terror after 9-11, mm -hmm. no? yes. 2001. Mm -hmm. That was when uh, the United States, together with the other, you know, with many nations, uh, realized that the Islamic extremist terrorism is using Mindanao mm -hmm. as a training ground. And they have to assist the Philippines. Right. No? Right. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Also, between 92 and 99, 1999, uh, when we, we sent out the bases, we saw the, the build, the build up of Chinese uh, facilities in the different uh, uh, islands. No? Mischief Reef, you know, you said, uh, in the that was the first one. Uh, yes, uh, Reef, uh, in the different uh, rock formations, uh, particularly Mischief Reef. No? Mm -hmm. So, this, these two factors no, uh, mm -hmm. made the two governments realize that, look, we have to okay. talk again because there are developments okay. in the South China Sea mm -hmm. that we must watch, we right. must monitor. So, you, you, during that time, uh, of course, the international community, the United States, saw the need for it. I think they, mula nung paalisin sila sa bases, Subic and Clark, circa 1992, I think, of course, that was a strategic setback for them, and they, they would have never changed their minds about how beneficial having an outpost in the Philippines would be. But for us Filipinos, sir, was there a change in mindset or perspective from uh, we hailed that decision to kick out the bases and assert Philippine sovereignty in 1990, 1991, when the vote was carried out, and then pumasok ang China sa, sa Kalayaan group of islands, uh, terror emerged as a more insidious threat. Did Filipinos have a change of mind about having U.S. troops within our territory in the first place? Nang time na yun, sir? Well, uh, nakalagay na kasi sa constitution natin eh, na U.S. na foreign troops, bases, or facilities are not allowed in foreign, in, in, in Philippine territory unless there is a treaty right uh, that is uh, concurred and that's the vfa the yeah that's the yes. what the vfa oh. served it was the legal cover yes. to fulfill so, a constitutional requirement yes hindi pwedeng mayroong foreign troops based facilities sa pilipinas sabi ng 1987 constitution yes pero ang kalahati noon per, pero lang kung papayagan natin mm -hmm. through a treaty yes so makita mo dalawang parts yon yes hindi pwede Pero pwede kung Unless, papayag tayo. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. And ngayon po ngayag tayo. Okay. Dahil through the visiting forces. Mm -hmm. And the, yung MDT hindi naman nawala eh. Right. Even if we close the bases, nandiyan pa rin yung mutual obligation. In, in terms of an eh. aggression, an aggressive attack. Yes. Uh, an armed attack from a foreign aggressor. Uh, that is one. But the other obligation is they will individually or collectively assist each other build its def their defense capabilities. Okay. So, may training portion. Right. Hindi arm attack only. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mayroong obligation to develop its other's defense uh -huh. capabilities. And it's clear naman who will develop whom. It's not like we can contribute much to build up the USS capability in the same way that we have, they have a lot that they can, ba? is that a fair statement okay. to say? Maraming kasi hindi nakakalam. Ano ang naitutulong natin sa Amerika? Right. That's what we want to know. Yes. Uh -oh. Okay. The U.S. being a Pacific power, you know, besides being a global power, so nakita natin yung they have they have uh, their forces are uh, in in uh, are extensively deployed you know, throughout the Pacific. They are based in Japan, in Korea. Okay, now these troops need to train. Their pilots need to exercise to fly uh, maneuver maneuvers in a, a combat simulation no the same way with their ships no with the aircraft carrier uh, 
everybody has to train. The Marines have to land ashore, fire their guns. Hmm. Ano ang Pilipinas para sa kanila? Remember, Subic was a huge, the largest naval base outside mainland USA. No? And they know the terrain is ideal for training. And for, for many years, no? for decades, they have been using the jungles of Subic as well as our runways. Now, of particular importance is Crow Valley mm. in Kapas, yeah. That is the largest, as they have described to me, in the region, na training ground which can accommodate, you know, more than a, the size of a brigade. Mm -hmm. Now, that's more than 3,000 troops with, with hundreds of vehicles in one sitting, in one operational uh, uh, exercise. In other words, para kang mayroong stadium. Yes. Na 50 kilometers long. No. no. Tapos may mountains where you could observe. Right. Imagine 50 kilometers long. But besides serving uh, as their ano, no. as their stadium for training, mm -hmm. meron ba tayong nabibigyan na tactical know-how that we are Hindi able to Hindi importante sa kanila yun. Kailangan nila terrain eh, ground okay. eh. Why? Because they are not allowed to fire their guns, live rounds, and uh, and drop their bombs in many parts of Asia. The governments would not allow it. Yes. They're confined to certain bases only. Right. Like in Japan, they're confined to a certain place near Mount Fuji. Mm -hmm. Pero yung Kapas, Tarla, the Crow Valley, it's an ideal uh, training ground for them, for them to drop guns, mm -hmm. for their jets, you know, to, to practice uh, right. uh, hitting targets. Mm -hmm. That is our biggest contribution to them. Yes. That's priceless, you know. Mm -hmm. Kaya tuwang tuwa sila, you know, when there is this uh, accommodation. The exercises, yes. uh, That's what we give them. Okay. And in return, uh, yeah, we, we, we get training. Yes. And uh, we get reimbursed, no? For the ammunition, the fuel that we use. Right. We get yeah. reimbursements. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, of course, the, as I've said, this is not all about Balikatan. Yes. And Crow Valley. There are other ex just as important. Throughout the Philippines, since 2002, no? yes. and I was still in the active service then, uh, we know that there was the Joint Special Operations Task Force Philippines based in Zamboanga with about 500 to 600 troops mm -hmm. uh, in the different, deployed in the different brigades and battalions as advisors. So, yun ang, yun ang yeah, tulong. That's the other thing. Yun ang oh. tulong nila. Na low-key, hindi nakikita yan. Kasi nasa batalyon, nandun right. sa field eh. Right. Nasa Cotabato, nasa mm -hmm. Lanao, nasa Basila, nasa Holo. You don't see them. Yes. Uh, groups of seven people, seven special forces, mm -hmm. or ten people in, in a brigade headquarters. Hindi nakikita ng tao yun. But they're there to advise, to train. And most importantly, they have uh, advanced platforms like drones, Mm -hmm. that provide our troops intelligence and surveillance right. capabilities, which we don't have those uh, equipment. No? And it was said to have been crucial in winning the war in Marawi. That's one. But uh, uh, before that, the neutralization of that uh, uh, number one terrorist, Abu Sabaya, mm -hmm. the one who was responsible for the Dos Palmas kidnapping, yes. Yes. that was done uh, mm -hmm. or made possible because of the assistance of a U.S. Uh, uh, surveillance platform. Right, you know? right. Th those are the things that uh, uh, mutually uh, exchange. Yes. Uh, and that's, and that's, that's specifically other. because the VFA allows them to be here. Precisely. Because as you've said, there's military assistance program. Other aspects of the, of the mutual defense treaty, uh, the treaty alliance, but in, in particular, the VFA allows for their presence here. And just to recap, you're saying, sir, that uh, we benefited dahil dun sa uh, the exercises, the training that we received doing joint exercises with the American forces, as well as the tactic. Would you is that correct to say uh, the um, uh, strategic gains against support, uh, uh, terror networks? Intelligence surveillance support. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. intelligence support basically. Right. And training and advising. But there's another aspect, no? Mm -hmm. uh, their assistance during huge disasters. Uh, yes. natural disasters mm -hmm. and notably yung uh, typhoon Yolanda or right. Hawaiian you know, yes. wherein the first to respond was a mm -hmm. US air aircraft carrier task force right 13,000 mm -hmm. 
troops, because of the visiting forces agreement, yes. claro, no, anong magagawa, anong pwede, anong hindi, uh, and so, mabilis silang dumating at nakapag-assist. So, I would say many lives were uh, were saved, right. uh, and they have done so many relief operations. Right, and so without the VFA, all those will have to go. Mahirapan, mahirapan. For example, the assistance against, uh, well, the counter-terrorism effort. Kung meron kang troops, kung may U.S. troops sa Mindanao, in some parts of Mindanao, no? although they have drastically reduced it, eh, papano kung nagda-drive ng vehicle yung Amerikano, they have their own vehicle, hahanap mo ba ng driver's license? Right. Pwede ba yung U.S. license nila? Uh -huh. Yung vehicle nila, kailangan mo pa bang iparegister sa LTO? Yeah. So, do you agree or disagree with terminating the VFA now? <clears throat> okay. Again, we cannot talk of the VFA without talking of the Mutual Defense Treaty. Right. It is the Mutual Defense Treaty obligations that we need to review. You know, because in 1951, the the MDT was um, was a um, was conceived no? uh, for the Cold War uh, scenario, you know? the the surge of communism uh, to prevent the containment of communism, no? and uh, during that time, it was not terrorism was not a mm -hmm. recognized, it right. was not there. Uh, cyber cyber attacks, mm -hmm. um, cyber war mm -hmm. is not a known uh, threat. Mm -hmm. Pandemics, natural right. disasters, it was not in 1951. Mm -hmm. So now, it's about time we look. Na yun bang mga current threat scenarios mm -hmm. na hindi naman na conceive in 1951. I dapat makita ngayon kung yan ay dapat isama. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kasi wala pa namang cyber uh, attacks noon. Na ngayon, okay. it's so, just common. Di ba? So okay lang sir na wala muna yung VFA at this time? Sa amin, it's not timely at this time. No, You have to review first the Mutual Defense Treaty. So it's not, it's mga, not timely to remove it. It's not it. timely to remove it now. Now, after the review, malalaman natin kung gusto nating it downgrade yung relationship tanggalin yung or you know uh, abrogate the no less than the MDT mm -hmm. because it the VFA follows no yes or improve it no mm -hmm. yung mga concerns natin na may, may mga nagsasabi wala namang nagawa ang Amerikano nung na take over ng China yung Scarborough Shoal eh. mm -hmm. so makikita yon ano ang kulang no uh, so we can improve it, or status ko lang as is. Mm. No? Okay, sir, what did you think was kulang? Kung kayo yung if if you're given the chance to renegotiate the terms, what would you put in? Alimbawa, yung war on terrorism. Wala naman yung sa 1951 eh. O di isama natin. O alimbawa, eto yung. Uh, would you allow them to put boots on the ground, as in to fight alongside in terms of combat? Alongside Philippine uh, troops? That, that will be negotiable. Depending sa conditions eh. Mm -hmm. uh, under our laws nga eh, no foreign troops unless we agree eh, right. mm -hmm. So, depending on sa conditions uh, ng situation. Mm -hmm. like, what would you prefer? If, something like, like that? Like in the MDT sir? with other countries in Japan, mm -hmm. you know. Nandun naman klaro eh, if, if one party is attacked, it will be considered yes. an attack in the other country. Right. So, right. It's, it's there in the MDT now. Sa atin. Mm -hmm. So, nandun pa rin yun. Yes. Oh, that is an assurance. And most of all, the value of the MDT now, huh? now, because you're asking also, is it timely? You know? Right now, we have a threat in the South China Sea, you know, in the West Philippine Sea. Uh, uh, our forces in the Pag-asa Island, everyone knows that 24-7, uh, they are surrounded by Chinese vessels. You know? and they are militia vessels, no? backed up by Chinese Coast Guard, backed up by the uh, PLA Navy. No? So, they could, at will, 
if they want to choke our forces mm -hmm. there, prevent resupply, prevent uh, food, mm -hmm. fuel from coming right. in. And what happens? We give up, right? We lose it. And they can do it anytime. So what I would think, like to believe prevents these forces from being more aggressive, taking over these islands, is the presence of the uh, U.S. Navy. No? Outside of exercises, which is year-round, so at any given time, we probably have a certain number of U.S. troops within the country preparing for the next round of exercises. But aside from those, are there forces pre-positioned? How operational is EDCA at this point? Na meron na bang na may, diba? It's about pre-positioning assets, pre-positioning troops, so that de facto, they have, although rotational, there is a constant on-standby presence of the U.S. military here in the Philippines. Oh, yes, yes. That, mm -hmm. That's a, a permanent thing because they have to, um, they have to uh, develop their the EDCA facilities. There are structures that are being built. As I said, it's a year-round thing. There are some school buildings somewhere being developed. No? Right. Or there are some assistance uh, in, a, in a camp in Mindanao being done. So the U.S. troops are on the ground. They could mm. be staying in the hotels mm. in Cagayan de Oro uh, mm. or Zamboanga. Mm. They have to stay somewhere. And this is covered, yeah. by, and this is allowed for by the VFA precisely. Definitely, definitely. And um, this is what you're saying that provides deterrence against further aggression from well, the Chinese. Well, uh, I'm talking sea. of the West Philippine Sea. Yes, the in West Philippine Sea. Yes. yes. Now, wala namang uh, troops on. That, that I'm talking of the U.S. Navy assets right. that are in the vicinity nearby because their nearest base is Okinawa. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. Okinawa is what a thousand plus miles away. Mm -hmm. uh, it will take. Maybe four hours mm -hmm. to reach the field by by ano yan, uh, supersonic uh, aircraft. E kung barko yan mga dalawang araw. So that's how far it is for reaction. Ngayon, mm -hmm. kung merong if we are allowing the U.S. troops or, or uh, assets, naval platforms nila, to dock in Subic, to refuel in Subic, you know, because they're allowed through the VFA, the reaction time is faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is nothing to do with, you know, eh, uh, with focusing on China. This is mere deterrence. Para waging bold, wag maging bold, yung um, rival claimant, no? Kung hindi, and we have seen it, no? The way they have taken over uh, many artificial islands and and uh, built artificial islands mm -hmm. and fortified them. Yes. Nagawa nila. So if we are not, uh, if we are complacent, baka magising tayo, wala na sa atin yung isla. Okay. They've done it in Scarborough. Yes. Right? Looking at the other side of that um, argument, um, those who are for the abrogation of the VFA are saying, uh, in particular, see si Walden Bellio, he's saying that um, the VFA and having U.S. troops pre-position themselves and their assets here puts us in the crossfire, actually, of any potential conflict between the U.S. and China should there be overt conflict between the two countries. And um, also, uh, yun na nga, na we, are, we are just enabling our dependence on the U.S., outsourcing, or us outsourcing our national security, our external defense to a foreign force. Uh, how would you comment on that, sir? Okay. Uh, it is said by uh, some uh, critics of the VFA or the MDT that it has resulted into our dependence, no? Uh, yung military assistance program is different from the VFA, no? Uh, there are several components, yung foreign military sales, mm -hmm. FMS, yun dapat bibili tayo yes. eh, sa kanila, kung ano yung presyo, mm -hmm. no? Kung ano yung kanilang um, pricing. Meron naman na excess defense articles program. Yung mga hindi na ginagamit, sobra na pwedeng ibigay o bilhin natin at, uh, at friendlier uh, costs. Friendlier, <laughs> friendlier uh, rates. No? Or outright grants. No? Right. Sa inyo na yan. No? Now, hindi naman na i-prevent because of this uh, military assistance program. In the past, our government even bought from other countries. Eh. Uh, we bought uh, Italian planes in the past. Uh, 
I remember we, when we were in the field before, no? when I was still a junior officer, we bought uh, Spanish mortars. No? Uh, it's just that because of the need for interoperability of our troops, mas maganda na yung equipment natin are compatible. For example, in terms of ammunition, kung 5.56 millimeter uh, amo ka, maganda yung kabila ganun din dahil pag nagresupply, Right. Hindi na hindi AK-47 yung bala. Right, right, diba? right. Okay. So, those are the factors uh, yes. to be considered. Yes. But it is also correct to say na we should reduce our dependence no? uh, with, with the United States in terms of uh, military procurement. There are many sources. No? There were many sources of our, mm. of, of, of equipment. Oh, right. and aircraft or, or, or right. we weapon systems no, missiles mm -hmm. for example yes. there are many yes. and uh, I don't think we should be constrained right so I agree if along that line uh, we will be more independent yes. we should exercise it right mm -hmm. but that's in terms of um, asset acquisition yes but in terms of having a credible defense posture that ready force to be able to respond to a f to an attack for instance mm -hmm. Um, it seems to me that um, a lot of the thinking that goes into, you know, why we need the VFA, why we need to have foreign alliances, and not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying that uh, critics of these alliances are saying that you're only, you are only giving your own military, the armed forces of the Philippines, an excuse not to step up to the plate, not to be the first or the frontliners in terms of being able to respond to any attack. So well, is that true? Or? Let's let's look at the more uh, more uh, I'd say military militarily more powerful neighbors of ours, Japan, uh, very credible self-defense force, modern aircraft, modern ships. Same with Korea. No, even these nations who can stand, who can withstand. Oh, we have a very credible. Who have a credible defense posture? No? They still have alliances. They still have alliances. Um, eh, so much more. Kung ikaw ay malit na na bansa na binubuli na wala namang capability as of now, no? kasi dina develop mo pa, hindi natin alam kailan matatapos yon yung credible defense, no? Because even if we spend now, the other rivals, the other neighbors spending are also spending. And no? a lot more. A and lot a lot more. faster. Oh, so, yes. hanggang kailan yan? No? But, yes. tama naman yung ginagawa ng ating Pangulo. At, in fact, masaya ang ating military because, yes. finally, nalalagyan ng, ng pondo no? right. na napakalaki. During the time of President Duterte, and uh, the military uh, is, is very appreciative of this. Because yun ang number one welfare na maibibigay ng isang leader sa kanyang sundalo. Give him the equipment to survive and win. Not just survive, win. Prevail over the enemy. So, um, yung, yung dependence sa US, eh, dapat lang talaga na i-address natin yun. Mm -hmm. Wag hindi tayo canalize sa isa lang supplier. Right. Oo. Now, uh, you know, mang sinasabi na we become a magnet for an attack because yes. of the presence of U.S. bases. Right. Eh, kasama yun sa obligations ng mutual defense treaty. Kasi hindi naman kung ang Philippines inattack lang eh. Kung mm -hmm. ang U.S. inattack, tayo rin respond. In, we are also involved, no? Yes. In some way, uh, because of the treaty. Batas yun eh. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Merong nagsasabi kasi na, tinanong yan no, sa isang forum na nag-attend ako, eh papano kung merong U.S. weapons uh, dito, hindi ba tayo tatargetin din ng, for example, China? Nang, uh, dahil may U.S. nuclear weapons daw. No? Eh ang sagot nung ating isang official, sabi ni, well, I'll, I'll name him, sabi ni Ambassador Romualdez, U.S., E eh, pag yun ang ginawa, nuclear exchange na yun, eh, tapos na ang mundo nun. Sabi niya. So, besides, 
from a military point of view, the U.S. has many platforms. They have nuclear submarines at any one time. You know, there could be more than 20 in the Pacific uh, uh, Ocean. No? Mm. Hindi nila kailangan ng just land base. Eh. Meron silang mm. deterrent force na strategic. Mm. Their, their, their uh, uh, ballistic missile submarines. Mm. So, yung, yung Filipinas, kailangan natin din, in fact, yun ang gagawin natin, di ba? We, we intend to buy some uh, submarines. Mi missiles and submarines. Yes. Oh, whether the U.S. is there or not, <laughs> dahil meron tayong defensive capability, target pa rin yan. Right. Kung kahit na walang Amerikano yan, eh, defense capability natin right. yun. The in case of conflict, it's still a target from right. any uh, potential enemy, right. right? U.S. or not. Mm -hmm. So, sir, share with us whatever it is you can share with us, what you know about how we got to this point. Um, and if there were, were there moves from the military and defense establishment to try and dissuade the president, given that that, is, that appears to be the prevailing view uh, from your community that now is not a good time to just walk out of the VFA without checking first whether or not um, it's good for us. Um, were there any attempts to try and get the president to hold back a little? Um, were there? Uh, well, I'm not in the service anymore, and uh, I'm not in the official. I'm not in the. I don't have any government position, so um, we wish no, that the the advice of the uh, defense sector and the foreign affairs sector uh, were heard and uh, uh, played the role in the decision making of the president. What we saw was the were the testimonies, the statements of the Secretary of Foreign Affairs and Secretary of Defense during the hearing in the Senate. What do you make of those? And both Secretary Loxin and Secretary Lorenzana were saying that uh, what is needed is a review. Na, uh, basically, they were saying it's not timely to terminate now. I review natin. And they also cited the benefits that we are getting from the U.S. presence. No? So, uh, following, following those lines, no? uh, we, we totally agree with them. Na especially now that there is a constant possibility of more aggressive actions, more coercive actions by China against our claims in the hmm. West Philippine Sea. Were they able to make a representation to the president? From what you've heard, nakapaglatag ba sila nung um, recommendations or non-recommendations sila with President Duterte? I, I, I'd like to believe so because they are the official family and it is their responsibility as um, cabinet members, uh, particularly responsible for defense and foreign affairs, to give their advice to the president. The pros and cons, and then um, you know the benefits, the disadvantages, the implications in particular, the implications. But then they have to accede to the final decision maker, the president. Um, sir, within the military, uh, what is what's the sentiment? What are what are what are the ways of thinking that? Siyempre, iba iba yon sir per batch. The more senior ones will have a way of looking at. Well, it. my my personal opinion is. Um, of course, they have to uh, follow the, the chain of command, yes. you know, starting from the president. Mm -hmm. So, if there is a uh, uh, the, our training, you no, know, as former military men, is you obey the chain of command. You know? uh, and so, if the president has ordered this uh, this policy you know, to be followed, then you will not hear from the military individually. They might have uh, concerns, you know, they might have doubts, but they cannot express it publicly. And that's mm -hmm. our culture, that's our yeah. training. Mm -hmm. uh, but just the same, you know, I'm sure uh, there is a lot of concern because, kaya nang nasabi ko sa kanila, kanina, na we need 
a deterrent, uh, a deterrent capability, you know? because there's a big bully out there that we cannot handle by ourselves. While we are still developing that minimum credible defense capability, e papano kung gamitan tayo ng pwersa. So you need a deterrence. Uh, and that is only provided by a larger force, right. which in our, in our setting is the United States. Right. Our only treaty ally. Our treaty ally, be, yeah. and because of, and, and we have a shared history with, no? Yeah. Uh, speak the same language. Speak the language. There are five million Filipinos in the U.S. Mm. I think uh, our educational system, most of us know that. Right. Uh, we grew up in this uh, the Western um, uh, educational system. Right. Now, maring mabago yun in the future, no? mm. depending on sa takbo ng historia natin. But ang immediate concern from the military perspective is, and our duty under the Constitution is uh, defend our territory. Defend our territory. So mandate ng military yun eh. Mm. Kaya merong nagbabalak agawin sa'yo to take over, kiniklaim yan, eh, duty ng ating armed forces to defend it. Now, papano? With what? Yan ang tatanungin nila sa sarili nila. Mind you, there's no doubt about the courage, the yes. commitment yes. of our soldiers. Walang problema yun. Yes. They're ready to die for the country. Mm-hmm. But give them the tools to smack the other fellow first. Mm-hmm. For the overcome, right. that is credible defense, mm-hmm. sir. Uh, so, tamaba. From what I gather, uh, you, you you're you're in communication with uh, officers, our soldiers in active well, service. Uh, not officially. Yeah. Yes. But since uh, we uh-huh. have these associations, yes. we interact with them, no, and mm-hmm. uh, we get uh, an idea of their sentiments. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they would rather not abrogate the VFA I can at the say, moment. I can uh, confidently say so. And then, sir, um, si, um, Chief of Staff now, General Filimon Santos, um, his Senate, Senate confirmation coincided yung time na pinag-uusapan yung VFA abrogation. And he said that uh, the military is very happy and the military cannot complain because tinaasan yung salaries and the modernization is ongoing. So, as you have said, they can see and feel that the President is doing what he can to give the, our armed forces a better platform. Um, institutionally and even in individually by compensating them better. Um, would you say that uh, that had in a way, were they, were they able to manifest their opposition to abrogating the VFA, for example, or did it, did it put them in a position na dahil may utang na loob sila, hindi sila makapagsabi na, ah, sir, um, hinahinay, uh, sa tingin po no. namin, baka dapat hindi muna natin putulin. It is the uh, responsibility of the highest soldier of the land, the chief of staff of the armed forces, to give his professional advice from the military perspective, military point of view, to the commander in chief, together with his defense secretary. Okay. Uh, in a way, he is saying na, sir, kakayani namin, kahit na wala yung Americano. Pero iba yung kakayanin. It, iba yung mere survival, mere defending. Iba yung prevailing and winning. Okay? You are faced with a formidable military, very advanced. As we know ourselves, we know our limitations. Kakayanin ba? Kaya mas natin, sir. Ka- you know, kakayahin ko sir, sasabihin ko. But does it mean I will prevail? I can stop the occupation of the islands if need be, no? Ibang usapan yon. So, siguro, yung uh, banggit ni Chief of Staff noon, and I, I, I will not, ano, uh, baka naman sinasabi lang niya, Mr. President, pipilitin namin yung magagawa namin. Uh, because, uh, survival is not the the objective eh? it is prevailing right Re- right retaining what is ours mm-hmm. preventing them from taking over what is ours it's mm-hmm. not survival that's not the solution 
Right. It's uh, stopping them from occupying what is not theirs. So, sir, why do you think we find ourselves, <clears throat> excuse me, why do you think we find ourselves in this situation? What do you think motivates this decision to suddenly up and out and walk out of this uh, agreement? I, I can only um, refer to what we read in the papers, no? Sabi ni President, eh, eh, kasi raw yung visa ni Senator Bato na, na cancel. Yeah. And then later on, he says, "Na hindi naman talaga yon, no? Uh, maybe it's because of the pakikialam, no, mm -hmm. ng U.S. sa ating justice system, uh, because of the case of uh, Senator Delima, no? Uh, na hindi naman siguro dapat ginagawa, kasi meron naman tayo sa riling justice system na umiiral. So maybe why not just wait for the justice system of the Philippines?" to do its job, no? Mm -hmm. So, may punto rin yung Malacanya, no? Mm -hmm. For saying this. But then, to use the VFA uh, as, the, as the instrument to tell the Americans na, hey, uh, respect our sovereignty. Uh, we must first study the implications kasi it goes to national security. Mm -hmm. Was it reckless? Do you think it was reckless? Do you think it was... Well, the president has its own <laughs> sense of uh, okay. judgment. Yeah. And yun, sir, since nandito na tayo, uh, do you think, may chance pa ba na iatras? Although it's probably not within his character, the president's character yeah, sinabi to... Niya. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sinabi niya, uh, hindi, ko, hindi ako atras, hindi ko uh -huh. babalik ta rin. So, we must think forward. Hmm. What happens now without a VFA? Kasi nandun pa rin ang Mutual Defense Treaty. And EDCA, but EDCA is an appendix to the VFA. Oh, mahihirapan ngayon implement. Kasi mm -hmm. paano namin mapreposition equipment? Pwede kaming mag-land, mag-develop, pero alanganin eh. Kasi ano Pipila yung rules? sila sa immigration, sir. Yan oh. ang mangyayari. <laughs> and, and, and many things. Taxes sa kanilang da, dadaling mga sasakyan. Mm -hmm. O oh, driver's licenses. O oh, marami, marami magpag-practice ba sila? Kung may magkasakit sa kanila, pwede ba sila na magdala ng doktor dito, gagamutin yung mga pasyente? Ma many things, no? So, challenging. Challenging. But uh, we believe na we have to prepare for that eventuality kung talagang hindi na mare-reversion. Nandun pa rin yung relationship, eh. Nandun pa rin yung defense relationship. There are three levels according to international relations, no? na relationship ng defense relationship. One is a treaty ally and we have only one treaty ally. Pagka treaty ally, meron kang commitment mm. to defend each other. Yeah. Pangalawa, it's defense partnership. Mm. Philippines and Japan, we have a defense partnership. Mm. Philippines and Korea, we have a defense. We bought, uh, remember, we bought uh, fighter aircraft yeah. and frigates, no? Mm. And Japan, they, they uh, you give us um, Coast, Coast Guard, Guard vessels, uh, vessels patrol vessels. So, partners yan. Yes. Pero, since they are not treaty allies, walang commitment. Yes. So, pinaka-highest mo treaty ally, mm. defense partner. And then the third is friends. Mm. Oh, friend natin A friendly na, state. Though. Friend natin yung... Uh, South Africa. South Africa, Spain. Yes, you know, yes. Friend yan. Yeah. Oh. Now, so, nandito tayo ngayon. Mm. Kung yan tanggalin mo, mayroon pa bang relationship na posible? Pwede pa. Nandito yung defense partner, nandito yung friend. Right. Pero nawalan ka ng commitment. Yes. And right yeah. now, the U.S. is our only treaty ally. Right now. No plans of forging that level of an alliance with any other country at the moment. Wala pa tayong, ano, right. hindi pa natin alam. Looking at the future, see, Ambassador Babe Romualdez talked about, at some point, because the Philippines and the U.S. have a long shared history, the MDT, provided the MDT hindi magalaw, uh, will figure something out. At some point, at some future date, um, when the political climate changes, then perhaps yeah. a new agreement will be forged. Correct. Uh -oh. um, That's what possible. are your thoughts on that? That's very possible. Depends on uh, the next president. No? Uh, kung Kasi the next administration may want to restore the agreement. Mm -hmm. Depende kung anong, <laughs> anong uh, sinong papalit. No? Mm -hmm. uh, depende rin sa will of the Senate because the Senate has to concur again. Mm -hmm. If a treaty has to be uh, uh, agreed on, no? again, papasok ang Senate. Mm -hmm. We'll see. 
So, how do you feel about it? Um, it, it provided, he uh, granted that the alliance with the U.S. is a crucial alliance, a crucial aspect of our uh, national defense capability. Uh, looking forward, how do you feel about it now? Uh, what scenarios do you imagine in the next two, three years, five years? Well, the way I see it, uh, it might embolden the rival claimant, China, to, to adopt a more aggressive posture. No? Right now, they are using what we term as the gray zone tactics. Mm -hmm. The gray zone tactics, as I have explained uh, in some fora, yeah. if an arm attack no, is the threshold, gray zone tactics are done below the threshold para hindi ma-invoke the yeah. mutual defense treaty, right. which is an arm attack on a public vessel, aircraft, or facilities. Yes. So I'll do, if I'm the aggressor, para hindi ma-invoke ito, gagawa ko ng below the threshold, yes. gray zone. Yes. Uh, so the militias. Militias, magtatayo muna ako ng, kunyari, fishermen's facilities, lighthouses. Before you know it, ano na pala, militarized uh, fortification runway. na. Okay. <laughs> So, yun ang nangyayari ngayon, mm -hmm. uh, yung gray zone. And that is why we go back. Mm -hmm. Kung gusto nating revihin yung mutual defense treaty, siguro yung gray zone tactics should be there. No? Mm -hmm. uh, the creeping uh, uh, operations mm -hmm. no? uh, to take over some of right. our territories. Right, right. Uh, para para it could elicit a response from the US yeah, even response. at the gray zone level yes, palang yes yes oh. yes yun nga, yung cyber attack okay. napakalaking bagay yun. right cyber attack oh, okay which is an ongoing phenomena yes sir um some parting thoughts uh, to our viewers uh, who are curious about you know mahirap siya maintindihan because it's on one level military on the other it's foreign relations mm -hmm. uh What's something you would like us to, you know, um, walk away with from this conversation, thinking about the Visiting Forces Agreement with the U.S.? Well, um, uh, the Philippines is only one link in the chain. Uh, there is a defense structure since 1950s. Japan, South Korea, Philippines, all the way down to Australia. There is a defense linkage. No? That's the defense infrastructure. Now, ang Pilipinas ngayon ang humihiwalay. O baka humihiwalay. We, we will become the weakest link in the chain. Ngayon, ang iniisip ng ating uh, Pangulo ay uh, it's because of our relationship with the United States yung pakialam nila sa atin, ipakita natin na soberenya tayo, which we agree on. Dapat pakita soberenya tayo. However, there are implications, not only with the U.S.-Philippine relations. How about our neighbors, Japan, South Korea? Because their security is also tied up to this infrastructure. So, dapat din maliwanagan yun sa ating mga defense officials na hindi lang U.S. ang involved dito. And everyone will be, uh, our neighbors will be affected, these neighbors, these defense partners and friends. And uh, we have yet to see their reactions. Okay. Thank you so much, General Edilberto Adan, for joining us today sa Raptor Talk. Thank you. Uh, join us again next time. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay.